is Jorge Rivera with FirstCoast.tv, and I find myself with... Scott Grant. Okay. And um, Scott Grant has a wonderful story that maybe some people are aware of and some people are not aware of. But Scott, tell us what this story is about. Well, the story is about a German submarine off our coast in uh, April of 1942. And it's the submarine is called the U-123. It's commanded by a man named Reinhard Hardigan. And he sinks an oil tanker, the SS Gulf America, about four miles off the coast. Of the coast of? Jacksonville Beach. Oh. It happens at 9.20 local time on a Friday night. So the uh, boardwalk was busy. There were people driving their cars up and down the beach. There was still no blackout in Florida at that point. What what month was this probably? April 10th. 19, April. 10th, okay. 1942. So it was probably mid-70s. People were dancing on wow. the old pier. We basically entered the war by then because Pearl Harbor was December 41. Right. December 7th, 1941. Mm -hmm. so. um, Germans send the first submarines shortly before Christmas 1941. And the guy that comes here, he goes to New York initially on his first trip. Crazy. <laughs> and, you know, we were looking at some of the German stuff. There's, a, there's another book that comes out in 1942, in May of 42, and he writes an article in that book. Uh, the title of the article is Wir sehen New York. We, we see New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were in uh, New York. Yes, we see New York. That's so, uh, um, and it was a big piece, and he, he was a big deal. He was sort of a rock star in Germany already at that point because he had taken his submarine virtually into the uh, New York Harbor. Oh, wow. He and must he, have seen the Statue of Liberty through the periscope. That's what I imagine. Well, you know, that everybody always wants to have these guys right. under the water right. looking at, at these events through the periscope because mm -hmm. that's the way we imagine it. The, right. re, the reality is he was on the surface most mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, he, and when he sat outside New York waiting for an oil tanker to come along so he could sink it within sight of mm -hmm. New York City, yeah. he was on the surface. Wow, wow. And there were fishing boats in the vicinity. <laughs> That's crazy. And they, wow. you know, they, some of the crew was nervous and mm -hmm. somebody would see him, but uh, Hardigan was audacious. Oh, yeah. So he goes to New York and what happened? No oil tanker came Nothing, by? No ships come by. <laughs> no ships come by and eventually they leave. And as they're leaving and they're looking for a place to set down on the bottom for the day, um, they do see a, a, a ship and they sink it off of Coney Island. Oh, about wow. 30 miles off the coast. Do you know what kind of ship it was? Uh, it was a, Nor I believe it was a Norwegian factory ship converted oh. to uh, uh, transport oil. Oh, wow. Do you know, I don't know if you know or not, how long it would take uh, a U-boat to cross the Atlantic? It's about two weeks coming to the United States and about 10 days going back. Oh, because of the currents. Because yeah. of the Gulf Stream. Uh, so, so now he, so he sinks a, a ship off the coast of Coney Island, and now he heads south? No, this is his first trip. He spends most of that trip, uh, I think he gets down to Hatteras, and then he goes, he's finished his uh, hunting, and he goes back to Germany. They refuel the submarine, fix it up, mm -hmm, and they mm -hmm. come a second time. And it's on the second trip that he comes to Florida. Oh. And he was very excited to come to Florida. <laughs> he was. Like everybody else, he was, he was excited. excited. Hey, hey, hey. That is so interesting. Now, he makes it all the way out here, and so it happens at night, and people see the explosion or the, the fireworks of that whole attack. A passing Eastern Airlines flight, a commercial flight, that happens to be flying from Miami to New York at this roughly the same time this happened. Uh, reports that the flames leap 500 feet into the air. Wow. So I'm about 1,500 pounds of dynamite impacting with 90,000 barrels of kerosene. Oh my lord! So just think about that. I mean, because we all use kerosene. Did anyone survive that shit? Yeah, there were uh, 19 people died. Mm -hmm. um, and the death that kind of strikes me the most is uh, a guy was one of the two naval. Uh, people on board to operate the deck gun because the mm -hmm. Gulf America had a deck gun. It was the first oil tanker to be outfitted with a deck gun. They mm -hmm. never fired it. Okay. Um, but when they pulled this guy from the sea, his name was Rhodes, uh, the skin literally came uh, yeah. off his arm mm -hmm. and he survived for two days uh, before okay. he finally died. Wow. wow. Um, 19 people died. There were 48 people on board. 
Uh, so there were survivors, mm. including a, a local guy named Vasco Gear, who was, uh, I think, the chief engineer. And he was from Jacksonville. So he was, when they finally announced this, uh, five days later in the paper, uh, a lot of the article deals with uh, Vasco, mm. Vasco Gear. Now, Captain Hardy. Reinhard Hardigan is still alive. Yes, he is. He's 104 oh. years old. Oh. He's in Bremen, oh. Germany. Yesterday, we got his Bremen? phone number. Bremen? He lives in Bremen? He lives in Bremen. Uh. He, he, yesterday, we got his phone number. That's why. <laughs> We're going to talk to him this week or uh -huh. uh, sometime in the next week. We'll talk mm -hmm. to him and figure mm -hmm. out whether or not it's uh, possible. Yeah. I mean, he's 104. I don't have any idea what kind Tell of condition him. he is. Do you still want to come to Florida? <laughs> it's going to be a little different. Well, he comes in 1990 and again in 1992. Wow. Uh, Michael Gannon writes a book called Operation Drumbeat, which is about the this entire submarine campaign off our coast mm -hmm. in the first six or seven months of 1942. And as part of the book tour, Hardigan comes here. Um, he, he remarks that the people are very nice to him. Mm -hmm. And they did treat him well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Very well. Uh, you know, he's sort of a he's a hero in Germany, but he's he's a bit of a hero here. Um, I do like to remind people that you know, 19 people died April 10th. Well, yeah, out in the ocean mm -hmm. because of because of this guy. All right, I mean, um, you know, the argument on the other side is that he was doing his job. Well, yeah, uh, that was, was his job. That was his job was to destroy any type of cargo fuel or anything. We, what publications you have there by your side? Well, I have. Um, First off, I have Hardigan's book that he wrote in 1943. Mm -hmm. um, I usually say Alpha Station. Mm. And uh, this book is exceptionally rare. Um, I bought it from a man in Germany. Um, it is illegal to buy this book in Germany. Oh. And there you were talking about the guy from Das Kaboot. Ah, yes. I forget the name of the actor. Uh, it was Jürgen Prochnow. Who plays, yes. Who plays, I don't know if he's German or Austrian. I'm, I'm not, not sure. sure either, but it's Jürgen Prochnow mm -hmm. that plays the guy in the movie. And I don't think it's there's I don't think it's coincidental that the guy in the movie looks like our guy here. Mm, okay. There, you know, okay. this is one of the most famous submarine commanders mm -hmm. of all time. Well, he's still alive too, you know. This was an article that the Times Union ran on April 10th. Mhm. Mm and uh, I get quoted extensively in it, but down here it's the pop-out quote as well as some pictures that I provided. Uh, to the Times Union, including this picture here, which is it's a picture of the Gulf America. And what's interesting about the picture is that the, the Gulf America, it's, it sinks in about 40 feet of water. It settles by the stern, and the bow bobs on the surface for six days. Oh, wow. So somebody, this looks like an aerial photo to me, somebody flew by in daylight, there was almost no reporting on this at the time. Yeah. Almost none. That's more of my second question. What was the reaction of the press? The, none. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> there, was a, there was heavy censorship. And yeah, you think about it today and you think, oh, there, there would have been a thousand people with um, cell phone cameras mm -hmm. taking video of this. Right. Um, there would have been guys whose drones you know, would have flown out there. Now, yeah. with all that technology, it would have been much harder for... Uh, an enemy submarine um, to get that close to our shore and have essentially no one know that they're there. Right. Hardigan sinks six ships in seven days between Brunswick and Cape Canaveral. What a roll, huh? This is number four. Wow. Um, so they did know he was out there. They, right. they but And they sent, the nearest destroyer was in Miami. They sent a destroyer, the Dahlgren, up to try and deal with them. Hunt him, yeah, submarine hunt uh, The Dahlgren actually does catch him. Uh, launches some depth charges. Hardigan thinks he's done for, but then the Dahlgren uh, leaves. Uh, and that's the thing you don't. We know. were just so unprepared. All right. Well, yeah, yeah. We were so unprepared for war. Uh huh. Um, early in the morning, or sorry, in the afternoon, the day of the attack, he surfaces off of Saint Augustine in in broad daylight, about a mile off the coast. <laughs> oh, he, he, he oh, oh. Once again, brings his some of the crew up on deck to look at America. Oh, wow. They joke about being able to see pretty girls on the beach. Oh, that's funny. I mean, you know. So do you know how many ships in his career? 24. Wow. 24. Which is a good number. Well, yeah. 
It's a good number. Now, in, and he would theoretically have sunk more, but after this trip to America, he gets promoted. The second mm -hmm. trip to America gets him promoted. He, gets, he meets Hitler, he gets the Iron Cross. Um, he gets to write this book that I was showing you, which is a bestseller in Germany during mm -hmm. the war. Mm -hmm. Not surprising. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, of course. And he's, uh, he's a rock star. He's a hero. He's, uh, and he, that herodom continues throughout his life. He, he gets wealthy as an oil trader. He works briefly for Texaco. Uh, oh. He becomes a member of the Bundestag. Oh, wow. Um, you know, they know who he is. Right, right. And if you go now onto the Internet um, and you look up, you know, submarine commanders, mm -hmm. uh, his name will be will figure prominently in, right. in anybody's in the reports. Top ten or whatever, yeah. You know, part of it is that he's still alive. But there's only one news story, and that news story ran pretty much all over the country, and it's on April fifteenth, five days later. Mm -hmm. And I do have that clipping. Okay. Yes. Thirty one hundred roughly, give or take, men die the first seven months of, of nineteen forty two in the merchant marine service on the east coast of the United 3, States. Thirty one hundred, wow. And they're all they're all killed by submarines. That's about the same uh nine eleven. It's more. Mm, it's yeah. more than nine eleven and it's more mm -hmm. than Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. uh, not combined, but mo mm -hmm. it's more than each one of those individually. Each was twenty one to twenty three hundred people dying. Wow. wow. So this was the this was one of the greatest disasters in US naval history. Mm -hmm. Um the government did not want you to know. Mm. Um, they did everything they could uh, to cover up the fact that so many ships were being lost. Do you think they didn't want the 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 the, the, the population to uh, either panic or be demoralized? Yes, it's exactly what I think. Mm. It's exactly okay. what I think. They mm -hmm. didn't want the people to be demoralized or to mm -hmm. panic. Mm -hmm. And there was very little we could do. We had already given a lot of destroyers to England. Um, yes to protect the convoy routes between Nova Scotia and, uh, mm -hmm. and England. And we just didn't have um, enough ships to patrol our mm -hmm. own Pearl Harbor took coast. a bunch of those. You, exactly. Mm -hmm. And we were, we were building up at this point to fight the uh, Japanese in the Pacific. In, mm -hmm. I think in May we fight the Battle of the Coral Sea, and then mm -hmm. obviously in June we fight the Battle of Midway. Right. And we spent a lot of time gearing up to beat the Japanese. I mean, the Japanese had just bombed Pearl right. Harbor. Um, well, I thank you for this conversation. You're welcome. This is uh, fascinating. I love history. And I think Americans are so um, enamored with a World War II history, either from the Japanese side or the European side. Um, well, World War II and the Civil War are generally, you know, the two periods in American history that get the most attention. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and people say, you know, why don't we focus this, the same attention on other significant mm -hmm, events? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Vietnam, we talked mm -hmm. about, civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. um, you can't, you know, people just get fascinated with, with certain events. I, 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 I think with World War II, World War I is that we came in so late, but I think in World War II and the Civil War is that the, the victories were so complete. In the, war, in the Civil War, Lee surrendered, blah, blah, blah. Of course, Lincoln pays a price at the end. And in World War II, you know, when you look at World War II, it's the picture of the sailor kissing the girl Aren't under it? the ticket yeah. in Times, Times Square. Square. So I think because those two wars, the victories were so complete,